I just got a brand new kitten. I didn't ask for it. My son found it up in Pennsylvania, poor, pathetic, crying kitten, and called me and asked me if I could take it in so that nothing terrible would happen to it. And you know what? I said, okay, bring it on down here and I'll try it. Now this cat is adorable. It's three and a half weeks old. It's gray and white, it's a tabby, blue eyes, and its most distinctive characteristic is that it has four white paws. It does promise that when it gets bigger, it's going to be a long hair. That's not exactly in her favor. And I haven't named it yet because naming is sort of like taking ownership, and I'm not really sure that I'm going to do that. We think that this cat is about three and a half weeks old. She can't lap from a plate, so I'm feeding her special kitty milk from a syringe. No needle, of course, you know, really. But I took the needle off, clipped it, and it's a medium-sized syringe. And I just sort of put that water into her mouth, and boy, does she love it. She can't lick, and she can't nurse the small end of the syringe. Now, you might wonder, wasn't I a little bit afraid of taking that cat in? Maybe I didn't know how to do this for a cat that young. Well, you see, it reminded me of another story. My mother taught me how to take care of kittens like that. I didn't know that she knew how to do it either when it happened. And it happens sort of like this. It's a longer story. I'm just going to give you a shorthand version. We didn't have animals or pets when I was growing up because Mama had a no pet rule. Absolutely no for pets. My sister Linda wanted a cat so bad that one day when she saw a kitten, probably just like this one I've got, in a flower shop window, she asked Mr. Todd if she could have it, and he gave it to her. And she brought it home, put a ribbon around its neck, and told Mama that it had followed her home. And Mama said, take it back to Mr. Todd and tell him, thanks, but no thanks. And that's what she had to do. Years later, when my daughter Karen was a brownie scout, my aunt gave her a brownie scout uniform. And she wanted to be a scout so bad that I took on a brownie scout troop. That's how susceptible I was when they'd look at me with these big brown eyes. Just like the afternoon that my Aunt Tut showed up at our house, this time carrying a box with two kittens in it, one for Karen and one for Robin. Oh, Mama, please, Mama, please, please, can we have a Mama, 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 please? And I ended up saying yes. One was a male, and one was a female. And the first thing you know, 39 days later, the female was having cats. And when I suggested that we get rid of some of those cats, then the girls were saying, well, we could. We could find homes for them, but we want to keep one of our grandchildren ourselves. And so they kept two. And we ended up with three females and one male, and before you know it, would you believe it, three females were giving birth in our downstairs bathroom. And we had a lot of cats. And it took a long time to find homes for those cats until we just had two. And we were living along for a number of years with our two-cat life, 
and we liked that quite well. Until one night, it was a cold, rainy night, my cousin Tom came to our front door, rang the bell, and when I let him in, I saw that something was moving inside his coat, and I said, what do you got there? Well, I knew I had to bring this to you. I was just in a filling station up the road, and I saw this cat, this bedraggled, pathetic cat that was going to freeze out there, Eloise, and I knew what a kind, sweet heart you have and that you would take it in. No, no, no kept coming out of my mouth, and yes, yes, yes kept coming out of his, and he turned on the charm that he had used on me since we were kids in North Carolina, and when he left, I had another cat. It was a cute cat. It was. It didn't have the 332 IQ that Tommy had promised, but it was a cute cat. And, you know, not long after that, my sister Dina and my mother came to visit. Now, my sister Dina is the same age as my middle child, my daughter Karen. And she fell in love with this cat from Tom. And I walked upstairs one night, and I heard her talking to my mother in the bedroom they were sharing. Mama, please, Mama, Mama, please. I just, Karen says she knows her mama will let me take it home. Eloise will give me that cat. I want that cat, please, please. And I sort of thought, ha, ha, wait till she hears about the no pet rule. And the next thing I heard coming from my mother was, oh, all right, you can have it if you promise that you'll be the one to take care of it. I will, I will, I will. And I didn't say anything because I wanted that cat to go home with my mother. I didn't know a thing about that cat, but I wanted it gone. About two weeks later, my mother called me from Charlotte. Eloise, what did you do? What have you done to me? What, do you, what did you do? How could you do this? And I said, what are you talking about, Mama? You gave me a pregnant cat. Ooh. And when the kittens were born, it was pretty clear that our Sammy was the father of that litter because one of those kittens looked just like him. Five kittens. Well, mother saw it around just like everybody does. She said, I'll just keep them just long enough to find other homes for them. But you see what happened was that several days after those kittens were born, the mama slipped out of the back porch behind somebody and she didn't come back and she didn't come back and she didn't come back and later it was pretty clear she couldn't come back and my mother was sitting there with five four day old kittens four days old what are you going to do with four day old kittens that looked just like little rats in a bucket, except that they were looking around and their mouths were moving and they wanted their milk. So my mother was a pretty smart, pretty uh, ingenious, is the word I'll get, ingenious with solving problems. So she went over to the Walgreens and she got some baby doll baby bottles. She brought them home along with some No More Tears baby shampoo, a bucket, and she also bought a set of those very soft brushes that they used to use for newborn babies because she said, I knew that I had to clean those up. I'd never be able to stand having those cats around that were just messing on themselves. It's terrible. So she and my father and my sister fed those cats 
four, five, six times a day with the little baby bar, baby doll bottles, plastic baby doll baby bottles full of milk. And Mama said, you should have seen them, Eloise. Their, store, their stomachs would just rise up, and they'd look so happy and so peaceful, and they'd drop off to sleep. And then, of course, they'd mess up, and we'd dip them into warm water in the bucket. And we'd lift them up, let them drain a little bit, dry them off, and then one of us would hold the hair dryer blowing onto them while the other one brushed them with that soft brush. And I remembered as she was telling me about it, watching the mothers that we had had years before when we had all those kittens. And that was exactly what they had done for their kittens. They had licked them dry and stimulated them so that their systems worked and that they felt loved and taken care of. And Mama was doing it with the stuff from Walgreens. Well, the cats flourished. And it was time. She found homes for them. And my sister took the gray long hair that looked like our Sammy down to Georgia and called it Smoke. And Mother got rid of the three of them, found homes, and that left the yellow cat with sort of a long hair, yellow, orange colored, and they called it Maynard. A number of years ago, I was talking to my mother about those cats and the funny thing about my accidentally, accidentally sending her home with a pregnant cat. And she was saying, you know, as it turned out, Eloise, that was a good thing. I mean, we really saved those cats' lives. We were their, their mother, the three of us. And they did really well, except for one thing. You know something? Maynard could never mew. Mew, mew. He never could do it. I tried. I tried to teach him how to make that sound. Mew, mew. But he never could. I guess he needed his other mother. But he was really just one of the best pets we ever had. Mama, one of the best pets you ever had? He was the only pet you ever had. Well, maybe so. Maybe so. And last night when I got my new kitten and today when I was up feeding her with that little syringe feeling and rubbing the fur on her back, you can believe I was thinking about my mama and grateful that she had taught me how to take care of this poor baby. Thank you very much.